Hello. It's good to see you. Today we are going to be making a fun little wreath. We're going to be using just a regular 14 inch wreath form that uh, I got this one at Dollar Tree. You can really use any kind of wreath form I would imagine, um, but this is going to be a Beetlejuice wreath and this is going to be the center part. We're going to put this right in the middle of this thing right here. So this, I found this on Amazon. I just searched for um, something like Beetlejuice decoration or something like that. And I got this. This is, um, this is from Ruby's, I believe. I think Ruby's made this. Although it, okay, on here it says spirithalloween.com. So I guess you can get it from Spirit Halloween also. But I bought it on Amazon. And it has a little thing on the back here. So you could stand it on the table or you could hang it up. And I'm just going to go ahead and leave these things on here so that whoever, you know, wherever the wreath ends up, if they want to take it out and use this as a separate, a separate decoration, they can. We're just going to attach it with um, a little chenille stem so it can be removed very easily. But so this is going to be the centerpiece. And I mainly wanted to go with these colors here, although I am going to incorporate some orange as well. It says, I'm the ghost with the most, babe. Beetlejuice, Beetlejuice, Beetlejuice. <laughs> so I thought that was really cool. All right. So if you look at the colors here, we have kind of a lighter shade of purple, some green, and then black and white. So we have for that, I went ahead and just pulled a bunch of stuff out of the attic. Now, some of this stuff I had to go purchase. Some of it I already had, so I'm going to show you what I have here. Okay, first of all, I have um, two rolls of this. This is dark, sort of a dark purple mesh from Dollar Tree. A lot of this stuff came from Dollar Tree. It didn't all come from there, but a lot of it did. This did. So here's some purple. We're going to try to use two rolls of this. Now, it's only uh, five yards, so typically I find for a 14-inch wreath, um, if you're using these little five-yard rolls of mesh, you're going to need at least five of these, maybe six, um, to do it. So, But only two of them are going to be this color. And then I have this black mesh here. This is not from Dollar Tree. I think this is from Michaels. Um, and usually these are $10.00. Um, but if you watch, they put them on, they put their mesh on sale all the time and you can get them for $4.99. And I got this when it was on sale recently. So we're going to incorporate some black and purple. I have one roll of orange. Now this came from Dollar Tree. Um, it does have a little bit of gold in it, but I'm only going to use one roll. Um, I'm tempted to not even put it in there. But honestly, I think with all of the other colors, you're not really going to notice this orange, uh, you know, a lot. And I'm going to show you why, because I have something that I've never used in a wreath before. I'm not quite sure what I'm going to do with it. But I also have this green deco mesh. And it's quite a lot on here. It looks like it originally came from Christmas tree shops, but I found it at Goodwill for $1.99. An unopened roll of green deco mesh. So it is the perfect color green too. If you look at the green in this centerpiece, it's uh, it's pretty good. It's pretty close in his hair as well. So oh, and I also found up in the attic, and I don't know where this came from. I had this roll of glitter tool. I think this is from last Easter. I, I think I got it at Michaels, but the purple mesh is darker, but this glitter tool is a it's more of a pastel color, and I think it matches the purple in this decorative piece a little bit better. Then I have one more thing that's going to be really interesting to put in there. This right here. This is really cool. This is faux leather wide ribbon. Look at that. Now it is super wide. I'm thinking I'm going to have to cut it in half. And it looks like there'd be a lot on here, but it's actually not. It's only two feet. It's only two feet long. I did get two of these. Um, but I'm thinking, let's see, it's eight inches wide. But if I cut it down 
to about half of that, we're going to incorporate this black and white striped faux leather ribbon in there. I thought this would add an interesting bit of texture to it and also like the stripes because it really goes with the whole theme of the, uh, the Beetlejuice movie, which I watched again last night and I realized I watched Beetlejuice last night and I think it was probably the first time in at least 20 years that I had seen that movie. I didn't realize it had been that long, but um, yeah, I'm thinking the last time I watched it was in the late 90s, maybe 98 or so. So that was, that was insane. But yeah, I watched it last night because I wanted to know what I needed before I started um, getting stuff for it, like ribbon and stuff like that, or decorative items. So I found some ribbon. Here we have, this is wired ribbon. It's a nice light green color. And it also has a little bit of glitter in it. So I thought that, I really like the color green. That was the main reason I got it. And then up in the attic in my wreath stash, I found this orange ribbon here. And again, I, I don't want to use a lot of orange in this wreath, but I want to use just a little bit. Just because, I don't know, I just want to put a little bit of orange in there. So I don't know how much orange ribbon I'm going to use, but I found this and I also had... Now this one I really like because it has glitter. It has some um, iridescent glitter all over it. And this is a sheer orange ribbon here. It's not shiny or anything. So if we wanted to, we could, um, we, could we may use a little bit of this. Um, I don't know that I'll use all of it, but I may use a little bit of this ribbon right here. And then I also have this really pretty dark purple wide ribbon here. Uh, it's one and a half inches. It's really, I love that dark purple. I tried to find some that was a lighter shade of purple, but I didn't really see anything at the store that I liked. So I just went with this dark one here. And I also got this chevron stripe black and white ribbon. And it was funny, I, I got this at Walmart this morning. And I got home, and when I was looking through my stash, I didn't see it before, but I had I had this exact roll of ribbon up there. That's okay, though, because we can use that for Halloween wreaths in a little bit. So, I need to hurry up. It's hard to believe it, but we're already well into September. I, I need to get going on it. It's this year, all of a sudden, is flying by. And at Walmart, I also found this really pretty, almost like a neon green skinny ribbon. So I thought that was a perfect color. And I also got some skinny dark purple ribbon too. So we have a really cool wide variety of color colors. Look at that. Wow. I love all these colors of ribbon. That's really neat. So there's that. And then the decorations. I'm going to keep it kind of simple because I think with a wreath like this, you mainly want to look at the centerpiece. So you don't need a lot of really elaborate stuff around it. I did get some stuff though. Now we're going to go for, for attaching the bundles to the wreath. We're just going to use plain black chenille stems. I bought two packs of these. Now typically for a wreath, you're going to need, for the wreaths like I make, you're going to need about 50 bundles. Now, in these packs, you're going to get 25 stems, but you're going to cut them in half. So you don't need the whole stem for each bundle. You just need half. So typically, one pack like this is enough, but I went ahead and bought two just to be sure I had enough. And then we found some decorations at Dollar Tree yesterday. We got some eyeballs, so we can hot glue some little eyeballs to this wreath. Just, these are just little hollow plastic. They're like ping pong balls, basically. <laughs> so we can hot glue some of these eyes to it. And I also got a pack of green spiders. They're green glitter spiders. So we could, um, I don't know that we're going to put them all in there, but we can put some spiders in there. And then, because I love flowers, I got a bunch of flowers. Now all of these came from Dollar Tree and you'll notice some of these have little eyeballs in the in the flower. These are cool. So I got some, these are like black roses and they have eyeballs in there and a spider. So we can, we can cut this apart and put these pieces in there. 
I got this glittery stuff here. It's a branch. It's a, see? Branches. So I can cut these and put these little sparkly sprigs in there. I got some black, these have black glitter. And I also got some in this really cool purple color. So we can have purple glitter. And I got, here's a little bouquet of black roses. And we also have some little, some little glitter skulls in there. So maybe we could stick some skulls in there. We have these purple, these dark purple roses with black leaves. Oh, and these, these little roses also have eyeballs, but they're more of a, a plum color. See, just like that. So all together, actually makes kind of a cool little bouquet, like a little Halloween bouquet. These may look blue to you. I'm looking at my own monitor and they look kind of blue. They're actually like a violet color. They're more purple than blue, I would say, in real life. I like these back here, these plum colored ones with the eyeball. <laughs> so this is the decorative stuff, but we're not ready for this. Now the first step in this process is to make the bundles. And I'm gonna show you how to do that. Um, we're going to use the starburst technique, although I'm thinking the roll technique might be better. Here's my problem. Every time I make a wreath, it's a little different. My issue is I want to have enough room in the middle for the little plaque to show. I say we're going to do the starburst technique. We might actually do rolls because... When you make bundles with rolls, the bundles tend to be smaller. They don't stick out as far. The starburst rolls kind of stick out. The, the rolls, the starburst sticks out. The rolls are smaller. So we might actually do some rolled bundles instead because that's going to leave more of an open area in the middle. And it's it's not going to cover up the centerpiece as much. So I'm, I'm thinking this through as I talk. So actually... Instead of starburst, let's do rolls. I'm going to show you how to do that. It's, it's very simple. Anybody can do it. It just takes a little practice. It's no problem. So let's get set up and we will make some rolls. Okay, I have cut up some of our stuff. This stuff is pretty cool. This, um, this faux leather. The back is really soft, and I'm not quite sure how I want to use this in here because see, it's really thick. I wonder, because what we're going to do with the mesh is kind of roll it. I'm not sure yet how I'm going to use that. I'm going to have to look at that. We will start with the mesh. Now, if we're using the, the roll technique, now normally if we were doing starburst, we would take these two edges, pull it out, and then roll it together. It makes like a little bow tie, but we're not doing that. We're going to take the mesh. Maybe I should use, this piece is hard to see on this background. I'll try a green piece. Okay. Now these were all cut roughly six to nine inches long. It doesn't really matter. I mean... The thicker mesh, you, I find you don't have to make as long because it's it's a little stiffer than the Dollar Tree mesh. But anyway, you take it like this, and you're just going to kind of roll it up. If you have experience rolling things, it might help you. But it's going to start like this, so you want to hold it together because if you let it go, it's going to come apart. Okay. And we will grab a purple piece. We're going to do the same thing. You just grab it, roll it, and put it with the green piece like this and just hold it together. Okay, and then we'll take this black piece here, roll it, put it together. Now, for these bundles, you could do three or four pieces of mesh like this. Um, whatever you want to do. And then I'm going to take a wide piece of ribbon, put it over it, still holding everything together. And then I'll take a piece of this skinny ribbon and just put it on top. 
and then you're going to take one of your chenille stems that's been cut in half, lay it over the top like this, fold it under. You're going to take that whole bundle and just kind of pinch it in half. You're going to pinch it like that. So you have your two ends of your chenille stem. Bring them together and just twist them together. I usually try to do at least three twists and then you can let it go. So there's one. Now you'll notice the ribbon here is cut a certain way. It has that nice little finish to it. That's called uh, dovetailing. It's been dovetailed. And I'll show you how you do that. It's really easy. Like say you have this piece of uh, skinny ribbon. And I do it with all of the ribbon. When you just cut it, you know, it's just going to be straight across on both ends. You take your ribbon, you fold it in half lengthways, lengthwise, and you're just going to take your scissors and you're just going to cut that corner off. And when you open it up, it's going to be dovetailed. And it takes a little time, but I think it makes it look nicer. And you end up with a lot of these little pieces everywhere. You can also do it with wider ribbon like this. Same thing, you just fold it in half lengthwise. And then here's the fold here. And you're just going to cut that corner off. See? And it looks really nice. And then you just turn it around and fold it again. Fold it in half lengthwise. And cut the corner off. And again, you end up with these little pieces. It's it's handy. It's a good idea to keep a trash can handy just to put all your little trimmings in. But then you have that nice, pretty edge. Look at that. Okay, let's make another one. Again, you're just going to take your mesh here. Sometimes it sticks to itself. You can just undo it. You're just going to roll it. You can kind of see that it wants to roll this way anyway, so you're just kind of going along with that. Roll it. You can use a chip clip or whatever you like to hold it. I just put it between my fingers like that. There's a green piece here. We're going to roll it. Pin it between the fingers there. How about an orange piece? Look at that. And again, we're just going to roll it this way. Like that. And let's use this ribbon here. Take this wide one. Put it over the top. And maybe a piece of this green right here. That nice neon green. And then you take your half of a chenille stem. Lay it over the top. You have to hold it all together, bring it around, pinch it, and twist it at least three times on the underside. And you can fluff it out at this point. You can kind of just open it up, or you can just wait until after you've added all of your bundles to the wreath frame and then undo it. It doesn't really matter. You can do it either way. So that's another bundle. Now I'm going to show you how you attach these bundles to the wreath form. Alright. So here is your little wreath form. This is a 14 inch wreath form. Now you'll notice there are four wires. One, two, three, four. The outermost wire and the innermost wire we're not going to do anything with at this point. We're only going to be using these two here. Now we're going to turn it upside down so that this is the concave part, the convex. It's going to kind of bow out in the front. This is the back side here. So you have your bundles. And you, okay, so we're bringing it around. This is the back side again. So you have your two ends of your chenille stem. You're going to wrap them around those two inner wires and twist them together like that. And 
I'll grab the other one and we'll just put it right here beside it. Bring the ends of the stems around, twist them together. So it's basically the bundle is going to straddle these two wires. There. Now we'll turn it back over. Now this is going to be the front of the wreath right here. And you can just kind of open it up a little bit. Okay. Now, it may not look like much, but when we're done, this is going to be all covered in bundles like this. Now I will show you. You can see that these wreath forms are kind of separated by these pieces that hold it together. And you have six sections. One, two, three, four, five, six. And for each of these sections, you're going to have eight to eight or nine bundles like this. So you're going to end up with a total of about 50 bundles to do a wreath this size. Now, of course, if you have different size wreath forms or if your bundles are different, you know, the number of bundles is going to change. But for what we're doing, that's going to take about 50 bundles. Now, I'm going to keep making bundles. And I'm going to figure out a way to incorporate this into it. I wonder. See, I could roll it. But it's so little that I don't know how that's going to look. What I might do, you know what I might do? I may just cut this like ribbon and instead of using it like mesh, just use it like ribbon. Now that's an idea. Maybe I'll try that. Well, when I get done, you'll see what I did. But right now, I'm going to keep making bundles and adding them to the wreath frame. And then before we decorate it, I'm going to show you what it looks like. Okay, I have all of the bundles ready and they're on the wreath. And what I ended up doing with the uh, artificial leather was I just rolled it long ways, kind of like a diploma, and incorporated them into the bundles. I ended up not cutting them as ribbons. I think it turned out better this way. I think, honestly, this may be one of my favorite wreaths that I've ever done. I just love these the color combinations on this thing. Look! You see, they look like little diplomas. <laughs> I just decided that I kind of like this look better. See, they stick out a little bit. And then you can see the different types of ribbons in there. Now, some people think I overdo it on the ribbons a little bit. But I love all these ribbons. I want to do a wreath just in all ribbons someday. <laughs> and just forget about the mesh. We'll just have tons of ribbon. So you can see that we have all the colors here and I incorporated that lighter purple glitter tool. It's peeking out here and there. But the main thing I notice when I look at this is the black and white striped faux leather that's rolled up and it's just incorporated in uh, bundles all the way around. Look at the colors. Oh, it's awesome. Now, we haven't decorated it yet, and obviously we haven't added the centerpiece to it. That's coming next, but I wanted to show you this before I got into that. Look at the pretty colors. And on the back, it looks like this. You can see where I have attached each bundle all the way around, and I use just all black pipe cleaners um, so that they don't really show on the front. It's a little bit heavier than normal, and it's going to be even heavier after we add that centerpiece. But it's still, you know, it's, it's not super heavy, but I do notice it's a little heavier than normal. <laughs> so there it is, and now I'm going to add the decorations, the flowers, and the eyeballs, and the spiders, and then I'm going to add that middle part, and then I'll bring it back, and I'll show you how it looks when it's all done. All right, I got all the decorations added that I wanted to add to it. I got the centerpiece in it. I think it turned out really nice. Ah, I think this is one of my favorites that I've ever done. <laughs> so here it is. I put this piece in the middle here and I just have it attached with some uh, chenille stems in the back so it can be detached, you know, if, if you wanted to take it out and use this 
separately you could do that. We've got little eyeballs in here. I have some little sprigs sticking out. They're covered in uh, glitter as as am I. I have some in sort of a fuchsia color and then black up here. Little skulls here and little eyeballs peeking out at you everywhere from this wreath. I put one eyeball in the middle of a rose. And little spiders. There's a spider. There's another one up there. There's a little spider. So look at that. <laughs> I don't know. I just, I think this is my favorite. I think this is the one that I had the most fun doing. I just, I love, I love the combination of the colors and the decorations and everything. I really like this stuff. I've never used this before, this faux leather stuff. It's really thick. It feels like upholstery material. But yeah, I thought that looked really cool. <laughs> so there it is the Beetlejuice wreath. And one good thing about it is I got to watch the movie again, which I, like I said, I haven't done in a long time, so I really enjoyed that too. <laughs> Thank you so much for watching. I really hope you enjoyed this. I sure did. Um, and I hope that you have a wonderful day, and I'll see you again soon.